Hello, and welcome back to Zoom Basics. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zoom Basics, I'd like to look at something that's quite unique to Zim, and that, and that is blobs and squiggles. Yay! Uh, we love those. They're Zim shapes, like a circle, triangle, rectangle, blob, and squiggle. So that's where you can find them. Let's find some examples. Hmm, how about under examples? Uh, we use them everywhere. Everywhere they will be. Here's some shape tweens. So that's a blob in the shape of a heart to, to that shape. And we're animating from one blob to another blob. Here's a squiggle. And much like the blob, the, they, they can have these, uh, these bezier points right here. And we can move the bezier points around and create different, different patterns. Blobs can have these bezier points too. And now we go bump, reset, bang, and we animate it back to the, the original position there. So that's some examples of blobs and squiggles. Where else do we have them? We could put hit tests around them too. So this is a blob that we're now changing with the bezier handles. And as you can see, we're putting points around the blob that then we can find out if we're hitting uh, the blob or the squiggle. Um, anyway, so that's hit test path, that's called. Hmm, here's animating blobs. So in the background, these are blobs that are animating. We're animating to a circle to sound and applying blend modes on that, but that's with sound wave. Uh, maybe we'll see that later. Isn't that neat? So there we are animating blobs to get that shape. There's traversing along a squiggle. T-Bugs was a game where you had to change a squiggle to make bugs hit one another without hitting the teacups and capture the sugar. Uh, in Zim Neo is when we, we added a lot of animation to blobs and squiggles and dragging along paths. So this is a squiggle that's a path. And we can pick this up and drag along it. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? And you can also add. So there we go. I just added. Oh, this is, uh, I can tell, because when we added, it didn't go perfectly to where we added. This is Zim Neo. In Zim 10, we, we made that work better. So uh, you can hold, hold down the shift and delete that too. So there's other editing tricks that you can do. You can select multiples at once, but we'll look at that when we get into the code. Isn't that nice? Mm, let's see. Uh, so blobs can have, uh, this is an accessibility example right here. Blobs can have curved lines or straight lines. So this is a blob and they can be editable or not editable. This is a blob that has the point showing but they're all uh, points like that. And we're making different um, different ones, like so, changing the color of them. Uh, and while, meanwhile, that's all reading into a screen reader. So there's some blobs and squiggles. We have them all throughout here. Here we are animating uh, along a squiggle. We're animating this little roller coaster thing. Whee! And using frame.follow as well for that. Uh, we have a number of animated blobs and squiggles. This one's kind of cool, the bat, the bat light. Uh, you can change, change it down here, and it changes up there. Why, hello, I'm Batman. <laughs> it's like a little puppet. Um, and this one was blobs animated across a whole site. So anyway, quite versatile. Oh, I should show you Zim Neo. There's looping on a path. There's uh, blobs animating along a squiggle, et cetera, et cetera. There's an animated squiggle example. We have a number of animated blob examples too. SVG blob. That's turning an SVG into a blob. That wasn't a thing, but it sort of looked like that. Blobitars. We're planning on making that. It's like avatars, but you get to make your own blob and then uh, do things with it. That's turning a squiggle into a blob, so that was pretty cool. We made it so you can draw a squiggle, and then if you connect it, it turns it into a blob. Wow, amazing. Okay, so uh, how do we get out of here? What am I looking for again? We'll go up to the top, and I was looking for, in the code, under libraries, right here. So in the code section, under libraries, there's ImSocket, Physics, uh, 3JS, and then 
pizzazz. Pizzazz has four different types, backgrounds, icons, patterns, there could be more in the future, but anyway, and paths. So if I click there, we arrive at this. This was created in Zim Neo to help out, out things. And uh, here is a menu of different uh, already made blobs. So there's a cloud and you can copy the code for that. So there's the code that makes up that blob. And you pass that code into a new Zim blob and a cloud would be made. Yay. Or indeed, you can change the cloud and then this funny car would be made. That's what the code would be like that. You can slightly adjust the code in terms of its position as well. Generally, when you're doing this, um, the points refer to the blob, not their location. So uh, just be careful if you all of a sudden pick up the blob and put it over here. It may not really go over there when, when you really do it. So anyway, uh, we'll reset that. <laughs> squiggles, same deal. Here's a bunch of squiggles. And you can make letters. We were animating along letter paths at some point. Uh, but you are welcome to come in here. You see how we've got the name on it? I think I've made every squiggle. Oh, poor me. Poor Danzen, Dr. Abstract. In this one, we've had a few different people. Andy added some. Um, so you're welcome to uh, request that in Zim Slack right here. And if you make a cool shape or a bunch of shapes, want to be famous, Zim Famous. Yeah, make a bunch of shapes and send them to us. That'd be great. We'd add, add them to this list. And those are... Those are ready-made ones. But uh, this is kind of like drawing an SVG. You would come into here and you would make your own shapes. Okay, I, if I want that, there we go. That's my shape. I get the code. Send us that code and we'll put it into a, uh, we'll put it into, um, into the system here. Give us a name for it. That would be great. Or if we take that code, watch this. I'm gonna copy it, copy. Okay, copy that code right there. When we come into our code, I have a Zim blob is being ready to make up. Oh, darn, I forgot. If you need to know how to get that code, it's in Zim under code. And we hit copy. Oh, <laughs> I just over copied the code that I, that I had copied from here. So come back to here. <laughs> copy this code like that. We come back to not to there. Uh, 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 uh. Come back to here, we come in down here and we go, give me a new blob. And this is called the points parameter. So there might be a few other parameters. We'll jump directly to the points parameter here. Points, there we go. Those are all of the points that got added. It's kind of similar. These are called Bezier curves. We add a few different things to it, like the different type of handles, the different type of Bezier handles are on that. And, um, but it's, it's, it's similar to SVG in a sense. Blob is our SVG replacement. As a matter of fact, you can take SVG and pass it into the points here, as long as it's an SVG path that you're putting in here. We work with SVG in other ways as well. That may be something that you can look at later. But generally, when we're working in Zim, we don't really use SVGs all that much because we got blobs and squiggles and they're more dynamic. We can drag them, we can animate along the paths and stuff like that. So that's what we use. And we'll dot center that. Oops, almost dot center it and open it up in browser plus. And there is our, our blob. Okay, it happens to be green but the color is another thing you can do. Color red, comma, and we'll get that as a, a red blob. You can also, if you want, make it in interactive colon false, comma, and then we can't interact with it, at which point we might want to dot drag it still or animate it or whatever we would do with any kind of object. And then it just acts like a shape like that. Okay, I may have gone through all of that pretty quickly. Other things we can do with interactive too, instead of making it interactive false, we could say show controls uh, false, I think, like that. And there's no controls, but if I click on it, now I get the controls. 
Um, by the way, you can allow people to change it and then uh, record their change so that the next time you can use that recording. If you want to do that, you can put it into a transform manager. These are very similar to transforms. So if you transform a shape, you get the handles and uh, blobs and squiggles, just don't, just use the blob and squiggle handles. Don't try and transform a blog and blob and squiggle. But if you pass transforms into a transform manager, it's called, it will remember the transforms. So the next time you come back, it remembers it. Well, you can pass this into a transform manager. So that would look like this. Um, const blob is equal to that. And then new transform manager. Uh, I think it's right here. We say blob and we give the transform manager a name, test, something like that. And let's see, you can pass an array of objects in there, but I think if there's only one, you, you don't have to pass in the array. We'll soon see. So I make some adjustments. <laughs> nice adjustment. And I refresh here. And there it is. I refreshed. Refresh again. It remembers that the controls are on. Turn off the controls. Refresh. It remembers the controls are off. Refresh. There she be. So that's it added to a transform manager. You can add it with a bunch of other things to a transform manager too. That lets kids make like make a collage. Kids, <laughs> you know, making this collage. Uh, as far as I know, we're sort of the most advanced framework when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, there's Paper.js has Bezier curves because it was born from Illustrator. So it was the, the coding that came from Illustrator. But uh, they can't do this. You'd have to code that manually yourself to be able to do that type of, of thing. As a matter of fact, I don't even think they have active Bezier points that allow you to, to dynamically change this stuff. It's... Maybe they do, or maybe they don't. Uh, but anyway, uh, and they don't have things like animation along these paths, which can be done in CSS uh, by CSS animations along um, along SVGs. And there are a few advantages in, in that. Uh, they've done well in, say, GSAP's animation along SVGs. But in general, uh, there's much more that you can do in Zim that you can't do in CSS. And we're looking at like their animation code is at least twice as big, maybe three times as big as Zim animation code along this stuff. We just blow them out of the water in terms of the efficiency of the code to be able to do things like animate along paths. So, and with SVG, you can't, you can't change the path like this. You cannot dynamically change the path or let the user uh, do it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so these things can be animated too. So you can imagine I can just animate these points and um, and that can be done. It's a touch tricky. The points are in arrays. They used to be within an array within arrays. So uh, let's see where to start with all that. Hmm. Here, here's the points and you see how each point is an array of other information. Well, if you want to animate, then you want to animate those points. Let's start with a simple blob, though. Just start with a default blob. Oh, <laughs> we're still we're still in the transform manager. So comment out the transform manager and and the points. And there is a blob, and we said show controls false. There's other things there too, like you can actually show the controls, but not make them interactive, but show them. Or you can choose to make them not interactive. So there's a, a couple different settings there. So I'm refreshing now. This is basically a red blob. Red, red default blob is sort of this almost circular blob. It, it actually isn't a circle. And as a matter of fact, we did add afterwards a couple things here with points where you could say rec, uh, square, was it? I can't remember. Square, maybe? Or it might have been rectangle. I think it was square. Oh, it's not square, rectangle. There we go. And that's the type of points there. Oh, I forgot to show you how to change the point types. So that's a point type of none, probably. If I double click there, you see how it gives me those little handles? Now we've got mirror. Like that. 
that's mirror. Double click again. Now we have what's called straight. Each one of these works independently, but it keeps the line straight. So that's the straight setting. Double click again, and it becomes the free setting. So now these things are free for one another, and that's how you get something like that. Double click again, and it goes back to none. Double click, mirror, double click, free. Oh no, sorry, straight, double click, free. Or each one of these operates independently. Double click, and it's back to none. Wow, isn't that amazing? By the way, you can change the size of this. On mobile, they'll default to be uh, bigger than not. But that's starting off the points with special shapes. There's a couple other ones you can do there too. And you can also say something like eight points. So give me eight points. There's eight points, but by default, they're on a blob. They start off as whatever that is, um, straight. Okay, so blobs default to having their, their beziers straight. That's with eight, but watch, if we say, Oh, I can't remember point type or something like that, or blob type. Uh, maybe it's just type. Let's let's go have a look at the docs. I'm hitting docs here, but anytime you want to see the Zim docs, it's docs like that. And type in blob. Points, control type, that's it. So control type is the parameter that we want. Control type none. Quote, none. Uh, what that means is it's um, it's like that. So there you go. You've just made whatever shape that is. Uh, one it's a stop sign, isn't it? Yeah, it's a rotated stop sign, so octagon. Once again, if you didn't put in the control type of none, then it defaults to this kind of control type. And remember, you can add or remove. If I hold the shift down, I remove. Or indeed, if I click and hold, there, it removes. That's for, that's for mobile. Uh, if I can get that line. I <laughs> can't. There, got the line. So that, that's me adding, um, adding a point there. Um, the other thing is you can select multiple points as well. So if I hold that and hold down the control key there, I've selected these three. You see how they're um, turned on? And now I can move all of those. Happens a little bit with the handles as well. The handles, it's a touch different. The handles, as long as they're on the same side, they're good. But if you try, I don't even know if I can get to that other handle. If I try and get a handle that is on a different size, so say this handle with the control key and then this handle right there, it, turn, it doesn't allow you to select multiple because that would be sort of weird. You see, if I collect this one and this one, I can move them in the same way. But what would I do if I'm if I'm moving this one and I, I've got those two selected? It would I wouldn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, <laughs> that that's uh, the scoop there. But you've got some multiple uh, control settings uh, available as well. Uh, let's see. Where were we? You remember what we were trying to do? Oh, I was trying to access these points. So let's go back to our basic blob there with four points, like so. And let's try and access the points and make some changes to them. If at a later time you want to or you want to make changes to points, you can pass in a new points parameter. So you can completely replace this points parameter with uh, another, like a points property that has the same format and then it will remake your blob for you. If you're wanting to access a point, then we can do it like so. We can say blob dot points uh, or point controls at a certain index at zero um, dot move uh, zero comma 100 or negative 100. Let's go. So we're going to try and move this one up. So the point controls are is this thing right here and let's have a look at the at what what those say down down below here in the methods or was that a property that we did yeah point controls is a property so there's points 
Yeah, well, that's a parameter. We don't want the parameter, we want the properties. Those are the methods. Properties. The type, the shape, the color, the color range, color command, border color, border width dashed, points, okay, points. Points. Get or set the points array of the blob in the same format as the points parameter. So that can be a number. You could change the number of points. A shape string, such as circle, rectangle, triangle, I think. A zim circle, rectangle, triangle. So you can actually make a, a rectangle of a certain size or dimension and pass that in. Or an array as follows. This is the, what we had used. The array is that's one element of the array. Here's another element of the array. So each element is an array. The control X, the control Y, the circle X, the circle Y. The, the, okay, those are the little rectangles and the control type. So those are kind of tricky. Circle X and circle Y, are they're probably going to be zero. So they're relative to the control itself. The, um, the, rec the little rectangle X, if you wanted a, a rectangle to the right hand side of the point, then you would have, uh, one of the rectangles would have a positive X with a zero Y. The other rectangle would have a negative X, like a reflection, a negative X and a zero Y. And that would give you a point in the middle with a handle here and a handle there, whatever you put for your X position. And then the, the type of control to that. Okay, so uh, next point controls, get an array of controls. Those are the containers. Use that to animate the controls. Point circles, get an array of the control circles, point objects. So that's used to place an object at that. You can use that to sort of put some object where the circle is in the, in the point. Uh, and then point objects is what we had before. Point objects was an array of arrays with the following format. Each point, you would get the control container a reference to the circle that's in that, a reference to the two rectangles, and the control type. So uh, this is what we provided initially for the first half of Blobs and Squiggles lives. It's all we had. If we wanted to access it, well, we also had the points. But if we wanted to animate it or operate on those controls, we'd have to say point objects at zero dot control dot whatever. Now we've got the point controls, which flattens this. It's basically just an array of these control objects. So the container for each control. So if we want to move um, that control up, then we can just go to the point controls array and access its elements to operate on them. So let's do, that's, that's what we were doing. Blob.pointcontrols, that gives us access to the first point, which is this one right here, zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. And we've asked to move that zero in the X and minus 100. But watch what happens. Apparently nothing. Well, <laughs> not very good. All right, so anytime we manually move a point, we have to update the blob. So that looks like this, blob, blib. Well, actually, we could put a dot update right on the end of that if we wanted to dot update, like so. And then we get the following. Yep, oh, crap. <laughs> I thought we could chain it right on to the end. Let's try it again. Blob, blib, blob dot update, blob dot update after uh, moving. And there we go. So why can't we chain it on the end? Maybe, I'm not sure why we weren't able to chain that and have a change. I never tried that actually. Usually would update it. You 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 do this in a ticker or something like that, and then update the uh, the blob like so. So that um, that saves us. We don't want to be constantly checking to see if something has updated the shape of the blob. That would be a lot of processing. So if you manually change the shape of the blob with code, we we do it on drag. That's updating the blob. Yay. But that's because we're doing it on a press move here. So we're press moving and, and changing the blob based on that. But if we if you're going to just do it with code, we don't want to be checking all the time to see if something has changed. So we make you update it 
once you might be changing a whole bunch of these things and then call one update which will refresh the page with uh, or the stage with the blob in the right place so that's pretty cool huh there there we just use this code to manipulate it and that allows you to animate it like we could wiggle by the way I think if we animate it it will figure out well let's try it let's animate this this point animate and we will animate um, the following properties props the y position to minus 200 so that's a uh, relative minus 200 when we put in quotes it means uh, relative amount 200 from wherever it is and we will uh, loop that colon true <laughs> or we'll try and loop it <laughs> we'll try and write the word loop or true and then we are going to rewind it to re <laughs> rewound <laughs> true oh my poor typing and let's see we won't do any blob dot update obviously if we're animating over time uh, we didn't put the time in there but by default it will be one second yeah uh, yeah see problems okay so even when we uh, uh, when we animate it we're not um, doing that automatically updating the blob so that's a good question how would we update the blob then basically all the time well, we could turn the animate off. This would be the safest way, because if it stops animating, we don't want to be updating the blob. We just want to, every time that animation moves moves it anywhere, uh, we want to call the update of the blob. So that means we need to turn the animation events on. True. Normally, we don't capture animation events either. Another option, like if we turn animation events on, I'll show you what we can do. We can make uh, an animation event then. Um, otherwise, we could have done something like ticker. If we know that this is running forever, if it's rewind and looping forever, we just throw it in a ticker, ticker.add, an arrow function. The ticker will constantly go, and in there, we constantly update a blob. That is very common if we're animating blobs. Do you remember when we showed you that animating to sound thing? We had all these blobs animating in the background. That just always kept going. We just put the blob.update in a ticker, and it looks like this. I mean, it's just constantly update the blob, and hey, there it goes. Okay? But if our animation was only going to loop five times, we'd have to remember to make sure to turn the ticker off, uh, or if people were able to pause the animation and then start the animation again, we wouldn't want to just up, be updating the blob for no reason. That, that would constantly be calculating and refreshing the blob. That just would waste battery or uh, power, you know, that kind of stuff. So instead, if you wanted to, you could turn the animation events on and then say um, blob.on animation call this function, arrow function, and in the function, call blob.update. This event will trigger every time the, um, the animation is trying to move something. <laughs> Anime events true blob.on, oh, blob.point control. Okay, blob, uh, did I get that whole thing? The blob is not actually animating, it's the point control at zero is actually animating. And we refresh that, and there we go. What do you think? Huh. How about that, huh? And remember, we have control over animation, so we can pause the animation after a certain amount of time or click on it and pause the animation or hit a button or whatever we want. And then um, if we paused animation, let's see if it works. So time out, say after uh, five seconds, we call this arrow function and that arrow function says, well, we can pause all animations, pause animate like so. And we refresh here. Or we could have paused animate on the blob control points. So after five seconds, we expect that to stop animating. <laughs> Has it been five seconds yet? Surely it's five seconds by now. And uh, 
it's <laughs> not stopping. That's definitely been five seconds. So what did we do wrong? Pause, animate, uh, time out. Good. We updated the blob. There's the animate. I Oh, I spelled animate wrong. So if we take a look at our error messages, there's the error message saying pause animate <laughs> is not defined. <laughs> Did you see it? I'm just testing you. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, we'll refresh there. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> okay, there we go. So the, the blob has paused its animate and uh, there we go. Neat, huh? Uh, we didn't look at squiggles. Squiggles are basically the same thing. Mm, new squiggle. I'm realizing, oh my goodness, this is this could potentially be such a long basics message, especially if we can't pay attention to typing squiggle. Uh, so this could potentially be a very long um, basics thing. There's so much that we can do with blobs and squiggles. So powerful. Uh, but maybe we can just animate along a path for us. I will take a look at a squiggle. So there's a new squiggle. And we can dot pose that squiggle at zero from the center and 50 from the bottom, maybe from the center and the bottom. Bottom. Yep. And there we have a new squiggle. Let's bring it up a little bit. 100. As you can see, the, the squiggle's there, and that's what a default squiggle works like. You can specify a, a bunch of different uh, points if you want, or find a nice squiggle to animate along, like a roller coaster squiggle I think we had in the paths. Do you want to do that? Go through that again. I've lost my browser. I'll right click and say open in browser, and that will find me a browser quickly. There it is in a browser. Isn't that nice? There it is paused. Um, so, uh, if you go to Docs, the different libraries are here. There's Pizzazz 4, or you can go External, and here's Pizzazz Make a Path right there. So open up that, and it's got a link to the paths. That's what it, it's called. It was made in ZimNeo. Here's our paths again. Remember this place? <laughs> Should we make it fo follow the wild? Thanks, Andy Ernie, for, for creating the wild. Here's a little bit of a spiral. You want to see something go along a spiral? Okay, so let's choose the code for a spiral. Copy. And we'll reduce that down. And we'll put it into the squiggle. Uh, the path of the squiggle will be this code. <coughs> so there it is. And why don't we just center that then. And we'll get rid of this blob completely. Commented out the blob and we refresh. <laughs> Points. Points. Is that? And there's our squiggle right there. Okay. Uh, dot ska. Two. Um, by the way, a squiggle is a shape, and any shape you can specify when it scales if you want the thickness of the squiggle or thickness of the border to scale as well. That's called border hmm, object or something like that, I think. Border object. Let me just check. Back in our docs under squiggle. Color, thickness, points, length, control, blah, 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 move, dashed, on top, stick, color, select, color, select points, edit points, interactive, stroke object. Sorry, stroke object is what it's called. Stroke object. And in there, we can specify with these little squiggly brackets some properties about the strokes. We can change the, their little cap, their end cap, uh, to a circle or uh, miter, different miters for, for angles and stuff like that. Uh, but another thing we can do is say ignore scale colon true. And when we refresh this, 
Oh, if it's white, it probably means we're missing a comma. So that's one thing at the end of that big long list of um, points there. We want a comma so that we come back to our stroke object. I don't know if it worked. Maybe did it? Ignore scale. True. Did I did I get that right? Stroke object. Ignore scale. False. So what will ignore scale? Ignore scale set to true to draw the specified line thickness regardless of the object scale. How can we test that? Let's scale 10. There we go. It is working. So you see that that's we made a big if we didn't put this, then we would see a big thick line because we just scaled our line by 10. So see that? It's been scaled by 10. One thing you notice though is these things also scale by 10. Look at the crispness of that. Isn't that beautiful? That's retina, it's in retina. Um you can if you if you don't want the these guys to scale as well as you scale, then you can transform. Uh, <laughs> go back to the docs. It's a method right here called transform points like that. And you say the type scale and then an amount. Uh, that will transform, but won't transform the the size of your Bezier points. Let's see what happens to it. Transform points. X and Y by default, zero, zero, the position of the transform about. So we'll just do zero, zeros. Okay, let's try it. So dot transform points, and we're going to say scale three times as big and dot center. So now um, you see how the it, it figures out, oh, the, these handles are going to have to be bigger than they were before. So that's, that's pretty cool. Where now it's not really scaling the handles, but gave you a scaled up version of those points so that it's bigger there. It didn't center it because that didn't adjust the bounds. The bounds are tricky with these things. They don't, uh, let's, we can take a look at it here. Dot bound, uh, dot outline is how you do it. So there's the original bounds and of, of the squiggle and it, uh, it hasn't changed them. I don't know why the original bounds look like that. Let's let's just get rid oh, it's because they were that's how it was made in the first place. So there's the transform version of that, and we want uh, no transform, so let's bring it down here. I hope this isn't too much for you. It's good to have these in basics. Uh, it's good to have these in basics for everybody. Um, for not just people learning Zim for the very first time, but also for the people I've had reports back that even people who have been using Zim for quite some time are going through these basics because they're finding tips in here. And some of the tips, I mean, Zim is a, a large project, as, as you uh, <laughs> may have, have discovered. Um, certain parts of it are still perhaps in, in growth stage or one of them. One of, one of those things is the bounds of a squiggle. Th that's really tricky stuff. And here is what the squiggle looks like when we first made it. But if we were to change it like that, the bounds just stay how they were initially. So we've added something though to approximate the bounds dynamically and you can kind of see how that happens. Let me, let me show you how that happens. It was back in Zim Neo? I'm just trying to think of when it was. No, it wasn't. It was Zim 10 that we added that in. So I'm heading on back. We can find the Zim 10 things in a couple different ways. We've moved them. Initially, uh, we had... Sorry. Initially, we had Zim 10 in amongst here. 
but it's been taken out. Zim cat things you can find by clicking on cat. But now anytime you want to find those those sites, you got two options. Go into the news. And in the news, hmm, articles, latest. I guess we moved it from the news. Yeah, sorry, that's that's where it used to be in the news, but <laughs> Not there anymore. Okay, so there you go. Not in the news anymore, but under examples, yes, under collections. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best place. Under collections, here's the Zim 10 features, here's the Zim Neo features, here's the Zim Cat features. Zim Cat features all laid out. Those are the same as available on the cat in the front page. You know what I mean by the cat in the front page? Here. Here are the Zim 10 features. Okay, so that's that. Um, under collections, there's the Zim 10 features. All things that were introduced in Zim 10, including this hit test path. And to be able to do that, we wanted to also check to select the bounds. Where uh, we show that is under beads. It was kind of a strange place for it. But here's beads. Uh, beads are a way to lay out objects along a blob or a squiggle. So that's a blob, and we've laid out objects on the blob and the squiggle. So here are some examples of what that looks like. We recognize that shape, don't we? That's the bat shape, and we've laid out these triangles along there, and we're animating it in some way. This is us laying out a bunch of um, circles, circles within circles even. And if I hold down the shift key and press on these things, I'm removing those points until I just get two points like that. Isn't that cool? Let's add a point. Wow. Animating along the paths. And here we are, finally, this very last one is our experiment with approximate, approximate bounds, where we're using uh, these points along the lines. What we do is we put a bunch of dots along the lines, and then we find the tallest dot, and that's the top bound. We find the most right-hand dot, and that allows us to change these bounds as we're, as we're moving these. That's like a difficult calculation that... And nobody gives us, and we were able to approximate the bounds of, of that. So we would have to do that calculation. If we wanted to always have the correct bounds, we would have to lay out a bunch of points and do the calculation of which of those points is the highest to be able to find the change in the bounds. You can see that it works pretty well here. Like, I mean, it's fast. But that's the kind of um, calculations that will bog down if you've got a bunch of things. And we, we don't really want to, we don't need those calculations most of the time. So there you go. They're available under this uh, approximate bounds for blob and squiggle, and it's in, in the docs for that. But it's not available all the time. So by default, a blob or a squiggle gets the initial bounds. And even when we're recording, when we take some bound, like when we take and we record this thing, the initial bounds are still being uh, used. So uh, that's why it looked a little bit different. Way back when I can't remember what we were doing, we were talking about trans transform points and scale and all this kind of stuff. Really, I just wanted to animate along that spiral. So the easiest way to do that would just be, uh, I mean, to put the spiral there, but you can dot scale, uh, dot scott um, three times or two times and center it. And we'll, the outline will be broken on that. We'll do it again here. Oh, uh, now, uh, now it's fine because that's, the, that's a plain squiggle without any point manipulation. So that therefore it gets the, the, the bounds that we have there until you start dragging. But anyway, scaling it's no problem. We still see the, the correct outline. The bounds have been scaled. That's actually what we're doing when we scale. We're basically scaling the bounds. So that looks fine. But bring back in the points of the spiral. 
and now the bounds have been scaled, but they're they're operating on some other bounds, like uh, from initial time, not on the spiral bounds. Okay, three is too big, so we'll animate twice as big. And there we go. That's what we're going to animate along. Yay! I don't think I've ever animated on a spiral. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got these points in there. We want to animate along it. What we would do, this is the path. This becomes known as the path. So we can say const path is equal to that. Then we want to animate something along it. That could be an image It could or an asset. It could be um, a circle. We'll just do a circle. So a new circle. We'll make it 50 comma and red dot. This doesn't matter because you'll see that when we animate it, it's just going to put it right on the path. So it really doesn't matter where the circle goes as long as it doesn't flash. Initially, we used that, that used to maybe flash and then it gets put, but I think we handle that now. It should be fine. Dot animate. And in the animate, if we drop these down. So we're just basically adding it to the stage anywhere. Like I said, we used to have to actually add it to the first point position, and that was a bit of a pain. We'd go to that array of points and say, hey, add it to the location of the first point, please. But now we don't have to. And what we're going to animate, the props for that, props, are path, colon, path. So whichever squiggler blob we want, we're going to animate that along the path. I believe that's it. Okay, we might want to add a time. We also may not want this to be interactive. Do you remember how to adjust that? Hopefully we've got the comma in there still, but we can say inter interactive colon false. Although it's fun to play around with that sometimes. If it's interactive colon false, it's automatically going to hide all the controls as well. And there it is animating around that squiggle. Let's change the time. Uh, about four seconds and rewind colon true. Wee boink wee ta da! <laughs> you know, like yay! So if you compare this kind of code to animating along a path with SVG and CSS, you will see that this is something like a third of the code and just like way more readable. Hey, animate along this path. As a matter of fact, if we weren't rewinding, it would look like this. Didn't have a time. There you go. Animate along this path. In ES6, we don't even have to say that. There we go. Add a time, five seconds. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. Anything, any last minute things with blobs and squiggles? How are we doing on the time of this thing? We're at 50 minutes. Okay, we've looked at squiggles. We've looked at blobs. Uh, we didn't show you how to put SVG into that. Let me just show you the SVG. That's back on the Zim 10 features. You know how to find that now. You look under Zim 10 here and here it is, SVG. This is called an SVG to bitmap, which by the way, now in Zim Cat 4, if you pass in a bitmap to your asset, or sorry, an SVG to your assets, it will make you this. You just use asset in the name of your SVG and you'll you'll get your SVG. So that's been simplified right down, but we used to call SVG to bitmap, which is basically giving us that. Uh, by the way, that scales like SVG. I thought initially that that meant if you, if you scaled it, it wouldn't hold the vector qualities, but it actually does. So go ahead and use SVGs pretty confidently now, just passing it into asset, and it seems to always make the right SVG. Whereas an SVG container is converting the SVG 
to Zim blobs or Zim squiggles. Wow. Okay, and that took a lot of process. Um, a bunch, uh, you know, a few of us worked on that together, and um, uh, it, it doesn't handle CSS styles on the SVG, but um, over time, I think we've made it so that it handles most SVGs. We took like an SVG of, of the map of Canada or something like that, and we brought that whole thing in, and it made the map of Canada, all of its little provinces and stuff. I'm like, wow. And they were all editable like this, if we so desired. That means we can also change the color of them, uh, do other things, animate the points on them, etc. Treat them like paths to animate along. However, uh, for the most part, it's easy enough to make a path for most paths that we need, easy enough to just make a path in that uh, tool, Pizzazz 4 tool, and just pass that path right into a blob. That's what I've been doing as I've been building, and I haven't been thwarted, so to speak. Uh, where you would want to use SVGs, if you have existing SVGs that, that you want to use, then you know, go ahead and bring in an SVG. All right, super. How about just a quick look at the documentation? There's obviously more, uh, there's more stuff that we can do in here that we haven't looked at, but probably that's uh, relatively advanced can change the size of the, the sticks and thicknesses uh, of the, the squiggle, that is. But yeah, those point uh, things for, for mobile, I'm just trying to think if there's anything to do with that. Uh, mobile will make them twice as big as they are, but you can change the size if you're making a kid's app or something like that. Um, that's under parameters up here. Handle size, I think, is what, what you would want there. Have a look at handle size. Handle size, default 20, mobile. Uh, default 20 on mobile, 10 for non-mobile. The size of the control boxes. It affects the circles too proportionally. There's if you want to allow toggle. So you notice how when you click off the blob, it uh, the, the controls go away. If you want the controls to always be there, then say allow toggle false. You can choose whether you want them to be able to move the blob or squiggle. So maybe it would be better if they could only move the controls and not actually pick up the whole blob or squiggle and move it. That works. Remember, you've got dashed properties uh, that look pretty cool, actually. Dashed properties on blobs and squiggles are pretty neat. There's various colors, uh, whether you want them to add points or not. So do you, oh, this is edit points. There's another one for adding points, too, I think. Uh, maybe not. Uh, let's user add points by pressing on the shape or remove points by shift clicking and holding. And there's a different setting anywhere to let the users add points anywhere. That's interesting. Or um, uh, false to allow adding and removing only on the line. So we adjusted that. It used to be you could click anywhere on the blob and it would add a point there. And that would like indent the, the blob in a sense. Uh, but then we found a way to make it click only on lines, and I think that seemed more natural. So you've got some options as to what you want to do there. All right, why don't we leave it at that? Thank you very much for hanging out here. If, if you're still here, I'm going to go to the top and back to the Zim site at zimjs.com. You're welcome to come and ask any questions that you want down on Slack or Discord. We're friendly. We'd love to see you there. Come on in. And uh, yeah, show us what you've got uh, in terms of if you're making anything. Um, there's example places to post examples. Like I said, you're welcome to ask questions there. And if you want vids on Zim Basics on anything else, that would be good. I think we've got a motion controller coming up where we're going to show you how to use a motion controller in Zim. And that's part of the controls of Zim. And there's a whole bunch of controls that we haven't even talked about uh, back in the docs. If you look under controls here, Badoomp. Uh, well, there's the ticker and a bunch of sort of features on how to control Zim itself. But there's pages, layout, accessibility, a bunch of managers, a bunch of controllers for swipe, motion pad, game, or motion controller, game pad. We're going to look at motion controller. Physics is considered a control. Effects. So controls are things that operate on existing objects. Um, and then the effects, the different types. Um, including then parallax and uh, 
flippers, books, scrollers, dynamos, accelerators. We looked at a few of those things. Pens, is a, we could do one completely on a pen. Sound wave, we could do one completely on sound wave. Synth, we could do one completely on synth. Emitter, we could do one completely on emitter. Uh, yeah, so we've got a few more basics to go on. E each of these controls probably could be a basics or sets of them. So yeah, touch of a way to go to catch all of the Zim basics. Uh, but so far, we have gone through much of what's happening up in here, I think. Don't know. We, did we look at one specifically on components? We might be able to do that to take you through a bunch more of types of components. They all work roughly the same way, so we hope you can get through that. Just If you've used a button or a slider or a dial, then um, you should be able to use most of the rest of them as well. All righty. Ciao from Dr. Abstract. See you later. Have a great night or day.